So, all right, against this backdrop of the tweets from this morning and the North Korean tensions, what must the president do in that speech and what are the expectations? Well, not that I think it will uh, help in the long run, but what he needs to do is not do any more damage. Uh, he looks comic uh, to much of the world. He looks unserious. Uh, and in that speech, which he's probably going to read well and which will be crafted for him by H.R. McMaster and other uh, high-quality national security advisors that he does have on staff, uh, he's got to demonstrate a temperament um, that and, and a willing to, to give and take with other key allies in the world uh, that North Korea is a problem. But, you know, he's walking walking into a place where he walked he took away from from some of the more responsible nations in the world what they most wanted they look at climate change as their existential threat and he's going in to say north korea is our existential threat and we need you well guess what He's already screwed a lot of other allies in the world, and now he's asking them uh, to gather around his mission uh, in, in trying to sort of curtail further North Korean development. It, on one level, that makes sense, but you can't just have a la carte relationships. Uh, and I think he's got to try and demonstrate he can, he can possibly rejigger uh, some of his disdain for international deals and international allies that we've had. So you're you're talking about a couple of different sides and factors of, of Donald Trump and his perspective of things. What is your sense of how the White House is setting up the expectations for this speech? Is the White House goal is it to rankle more countries or try to soothe relations with some? Is it both? Is it neither? I think that H.R. McMaster, Nikki Haley, and others have been trying to demonstrate a seriousness, a resolve about North Korea, and kind of a steady tempo. Uh, a lot of people have been critical of Nikki Haley, but I think she's been very, very consistent. I think H.R. McMaster, uh, in his commentary, has been very, very consistent, saying they don't want war with North Korea, but something has to change. And so they're trying to set a tempo that's serious, that shows resolve, uh, and that isn't reckless. The president isn't helping them in that, uh, particularly with this morning. Tweets. So I think they're trying to soothe allies into at least knowing that there's a stable decision making mechanism in the White House and that they're approaching this seriously and that they're conversing and talking in serious way, ways with key allies, as we saw in some of the readouts of the president's recent calls. But, but as many on your show have said uh, earlier today, the president himself is undermining that, that valiant effort of H.R. McMaster and others to demonstrate uh, that there, there are real serious adults in the room when it comes to these consequential decisions ahead. And do you see, Steve, a specific country or a specific region that is zeroing in on what this president says and specifically looking for signs? Well, I don't know if a specific country is, but the ones that matter most, oddly, uh, are Russia and China because they have the most significance in either working with us or working at odds with us with regards to North Korea. If Russia and China do not get on board with what we're doing and, and Donald Trump does not seduce them uh, into a partnership as Barack Obama did with Russia and China on Iran, then there is no game uh, with North Korea other than us acquiescing to North Korea having this nuclear potential and ballistic missile capacity or a uh, some kind of serious military conflict. Those are the two choices that we have if we don't, in fact, find a way to come to common cause with Russia and China. We've already got Japan and South Korea with us, but, but fundamentally, those two nations look at this incident with North Korea as one where either North uh, American leadership in the world precipitously falls or that we can kind of restore our position and continue to bring good things to the world and try and solve the North Korea problem. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.